Hello and welcome back to Crime and Justice. It's been horrible here. Because where I live, I live quite high. So today I woke up in the clouds. And it's only since the night time, the darkness is coming, that the clouds have gone. <laughs> and I can actually see. But I can't see because it's too dark to see anything. But... Hopefully it'll be a better day tomorrow. Right, let's have a look. Today we're looking at the case of Madeleine Soto. As you know, she went missing on the 26th of February and her body was found on the 1st of March. She was 13 years old. She just had a 13th birthday party at her grandmother's on the Sunday before she went missing, before she reported missing. And apparently she phoned Stefan up on the Saturday and asked him if he was coming to her birthday party. Right? Or, or probably said, don't come to my birthday party. We don't know what was said. But whatever was said on that phone got Stefan very anxious. Right? Because he's looking for medication of his dad or of his mom. Anything to calm him down. Then on Sunday, he goes over to kiss me. Which is about two and a half hours, three hour drive, depending on traffic. And he phoned his, he messaged his dad or phoned his dad when he got there. And I believe he got there about six, six ish on the evening in Kissimmee. But he didn't get to the house till, till about nine ish. So I don't know what he'd been doing between getting there and getting to the house. Anyway, Madeline was brought home by her aunt at 8.30 on the evening. Stefan turned up about 9 -ish. By then, she'd had a shower and she's taking her meds and everything. Her mum coming about 10.30. Now, this is what I find out. Right? At 11 o'clock, they all go to bed, right? You've heard the interviews. We'll go over them again because sometimes going over the interviews, you miss them at some times and you catch it maybe the third time or the fourth time of listening to it. But we're not doing that too hot. Anyway, so they all go to bed about 11-ish. But there's dates that those watching... The film, oh God, what was that film I was watching? Because she loved to sing. She lo She's a lovely singer. She had a good voice. And so they put this film on to watch. Right? Now, whether they put that film on before Jen got home, I don't know. Because she was only home half an hour before they went to bed. So you look... You glitched this with just starting the movie and then going to bed. Didn't make sense. Anyway. And then on Monday morning, Stefan said he took her to school, dropped her off down the road from the school because she didn't want to be dropped at the school. She didn't like his car. Right? And... Um, he watched her through his rear mirror walking towards the school. Well, we know that is BS. We know that is BS. Because they've now got him on the camera, on camera, at ten past eight. With Madeline in the car, heading towards home, the house. Right? 
So we've gone all over that. So I'm not going to go into that again. We can go into this another time. Anyway, he then gets arrested. Madeline is reported missing on Monday. He then gets arrested on the Wednesday for having CI pictures on his phone. And he actually was charged with 60 charges. <laughs> 60 charges. But each charge had 10 counts to it. So you think that 60 charges times 10. Right? And tonight we're going to be listening to the interview. I didn't know about this interview, right? We... I did the interview, showed you the interview the other night of the mother and father, Stephen Stone's mother and father, but I didn't realise there was this interview before. So, I've sat there today, listened to it all, recorded it, and then I've had to go through and edit it all. Alright? Just so that you get, we can just get the interview without... Like, because this is, both these videos we're watching tonight is credit to Grizzly True Crime. Her link is in the description. If you haven't already, please go over and subscribe. She does some fantastic work. She really does. And so, the two videos we're watching are from her. So the first one is the interview with the father. Now it's only a short one, because you know what the news, me news channels do, they edit it and cut it down. A uh, 15 or 30 minute interview could be cut down to about 5 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. So it's not very long. There is a lot cut out this interview. So we're going to watch it. And then we'll dis then we'll talk about it. So let's get it up on the screen. Let's get me off here. You don't need me on there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this picture up. Because it's only talking, so it doesn't matter about watching the video, it's just talking, okay? So I always do that. So that we only get the audio. If they're showing pictures, then I will I will show you the video. But they're not showing pictures. They're just showing. It's just audio. It's just them talking. Okay. So we're going to start off with this one first. Credit to Grizzly Two Grizzly Two Crimes. Tell me about your daughter. This is Tyler uh, Wallace. This is. Madeline Soto's biological father. I've seen some reports on online, you know, just on reading things on social media, of course, take it with a grain of salt, that he had actually fought for custody for Madeline, but didn't um, didn't get it or something like that. So, but he did, she did visit him and they were close. So um, he has a Facebook account as well. And he's here talking to the media, breaking his silence for the first time. So let's hear what he has to say. Maddie was, uh just the most important person to my wife and I. Uh, she was just full of joy. Tyler Wallace had last spoken to his daughter on her birthday. He had no idea it would be the last time. How did you find out? I was informed uh, through the a phone call from Jennifer uh, that she was missing. What was her demeanor? Jennifer's. Uh, um, was she calm? Was she no, freaking out? I would say anxious. The next morning, he got in his car and drove from Texas to Florida, only stopping for gas. But shortly after he got here, Madeline Soto's body was found in this rural area of Osceola County. Her mother's boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, is charged with sexual battery and possession of child sex abuse material. He is the main suspect in her murder after investigators say Stearns is on video dumping her backpack and laptop in a dumpster in the early morning hours of the day Maddie was reported missing. Did your daughter 
ever indicate that something was going on in that house? Not to me, no. What did you think of Stephen Stearns? I had interacted with him on Instagram a couple of times loosely, uh, just kind of seeing if he gave me the ick or if he seemed okay. Sorry to pause it there. Um, Janie Child says, wow, she looks like him. I can go back if you want. Right, I'm just going to skip this little bit. Hold on. Reported missing. Did your daughter ever indicate that something was going on? but not very responsive. Dumping her backpack and oh, left. I'm trying to get to the right back. And as far as I was interpreting his demeanor, he seemed like a warm, interested, but like not responsive, very often person. What do you think of him? Warm, interested, but not very responsive. Interesting. I mean, people like Stefan Stearns would have quite the mask on right especially if he's grooming and abusing children to be honest talking to someone online through instagram messaging or whatever it's hard to you can put yourself across as anything you know what i mean it's so it's hard to get um a true vibe of the person. You could probably get some sort of a vibe, but not. if you used to meet them, you'd probably think, oh, freaking hell. My daughter's living in the same house as that guy. You know what I mean? But when you're talking on Messenger or Inst Instagram, then it's a lot harder. Although I don't have that problem, I can click on strike by when someone's being an, an eye hole, I would say. Yeah, he's got quite the act on warm and interested, you know, friendly, as people say, funny, lots of people, we've seen lots of descriptions, right? Of course, we've had, <laughs> there's also phone calls from friends uh, that I'm sure you've heard on other channels, and it's... Some of them are like, no, he's he was a bit of a red flag, or he was a bit creepy if you think about that now, especially in hindsight, right? But oh my, no. I don't want to say that on camera, I can't communicate to you. Every father knows what I'm thinking right now. Tyler met with Kissimmee police about their ongoing investigation. But do you think that Jennifer Soto knows more? I don't know, and I am I am interested in knowing, but. I don't have reason to believe one way or the other right now. These I don't think he wants to believe she's got, because she's the mother. So he, in my heart, I just think he doesn't want to believe that she could have some knowledge of what happened or what was going on in that house. These are the things that the investigators are looking into. And now, he won't get that chance. Instead, he's here to take the little girl's ashes home to be with him now. Well, was Jen a good mother? I, I don't know how I can excuse this. I don't know how I can excuse this. I don't know the whole truth, though. I need to hear more. I need to hear more to answer that question. How did you... Shame. I don't know the whole truth though i need to hear more i need to hear more to answer that question how did you Shame. Shame. but he answers extremely responsibly you know as we should all <laughs> right it's just like i don't know waiting for more information who knows shame i, I feel very sorry for him my goodness find out uh i was informed uh through the phone call from Jennifer uh, that she was missing. Um, we weren't sure if uh, she was like actually missing or if she was staying at a friend's house at the time. We were trying to like wait to see if she showed up. And by the second day, I couldn't, I couldn't wait anymore. So I drove down to uh, Florida. I love what I had of her, but we were supposed to have so much more. And it's, I can't, I can't grasp it. I can't grasp it. That is so sad.
what I said. I loved the time we had, but we supposed we should have had more. You know what I mean? Now I'd like to see if he's doing interview now with someone. Right, I see his view, views now. Right. Yeah. See his views on Jen now. What he thinks she she could possibly know. Is she holding back on anything? Because he knows about that piece of SHIT. He knows he's in there for CB, child. Uh, I can't say the word because uh, YouTube are very, very particular. And so it's child B. Not, okay? Child B. And, um, but he's on charges of a lot more than just child B, child whatever. He's child CI, he's got CI charges on him, he's got everything. Now, if any of those happened, they brought a new law in this year in that state that anyone with any pictures of CI on their phones or any anything on their electronics, right, could face the DP, right? But from what I understand, everything they found happened before that law was brought in. However, now he's been charged with the murder of Madeline, they are going to fall the death penalty because they can in that state. Right? And it should get it. This is one person I believe should get the DP. Right? Uh, because this little girl, this young girl, had been SI'd by this guy since as early as eight years old. Now, I think she was six or seven when he got with the mother. Right? But what makes me, I just think, is there other children involved? Because she can't be the only one. He doesn't just wake up one morning when he's with Jen. Think, oh, well, she's got a, an eight-year-old daughter now. Ooh, you know what? No. There's got to be other children involved. And perhaps there is on some of the photos they found and videos they found. Right? Because they did find some hardware in his father's lockup, which we're going to be hearing about. Well, we won't hear about what they found. But we'll hear, hear about the local. Right? So they did find hardware in there. Which I should imagine, I, I believe, had pictures and videos and whatever. Else. But it doesn't state if they were all madly. Right? Or if there's other children previous. Right? Because if there is, they need to find these other children. They need to find them. But I'm now doing another live. Not tomorrow, it'll be Wednesday on this. And I'm looking into Stephen Stearns and I think it's the teachers 
the teachers and the neighbours we'll be looking at next, the interviews by then. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if it's going to be Stephen, Stephen Stones or the neighbour. I'm not sure. If it's going to be one of them, it'll be Wednesday night. But tonight we're just looking at the Madeline Soto. Now this is a video I made earlier, so gas tower out there. Okay. And there were people working on it. They didn't send me to it because I Right. I thought I took that off. Hold on. Hmm. Okay. As we're walking through the field, uh -huh. oh, here's a utility belt. Pull it up. I thought I'd take it this bit out. Yeah, smash that person into the ground. Oh, oh I had. Oh, I had. That big, big that's event. terrible. Back then we had. Hold on. Just put this picture back up again then. Now, this is the interview with the father. And this was the interview he done before the interview with the father and the mother. Right, so this was done round about, I believe, because Stefan Stones was arrested on the Wednesday. Right? And they, it's in this interview, they break it to the father that he's being arrested on certain charges. Okay, so let's listen to what they say. I have tried to edit as much out of the commentary from the from Grizzly. Okay, so it's just hopefully the interview. Yeah. Uh, and I was I was telling the other guy I was driving a at one time I had a, a pallet that the, the siren button was a it was a button on the floor left left side yeah. no air conditioning yeah. no air conditioning in Central Florida. Yeah. yeah, and I pulled the guy over, and I clocked him. And it was just just above Brewer Hill on on uh, Aloma, and he said, uh, "I think you were doing seventy. And he said, "No, this car won't do it seventy. I said, "This car does seventy, and it was clocking you at seventy. How long did you do? I, I was in a couple of years, and then I just felt like I wanted to get in some of that. That worked for Stouffer Foods, and so here here's the life. You know, he's on the phone. He's making hotel reservations. He's making golf reservations. He's yeah. making dinner reservations. Yeah. Right, we do have periods where it'll go quiet, and that's because it's being redacted with certain names, okay? So when you get periods of it being quiet, it's where it's being redacted. Job like that, so I, I work. Cool, yeah, very nice. So uh, obviously this is, this is a huge deal. Right. Obviously, it's it's and changed it's, from where it was at three o'clock. Investigation we came up with. Um, it's very hard to hear in some place sometimes as well. So <coughs> we were down in Northport. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to shoot straight. Out of respect for you and everything. Else. There's a storage unit down there. Yeah, I have a storage unit. You have a storage unit. Is that your son's storage unit, no, or is that your, that's your storage unit? Yeah. Okay. Does he have access to it? No, I have the keys. Okay. Um, were you aware that did your son come visit you on Monday morning? This Monday? Yeah. When no, he left Sunday. Here. Okay. He left Sunday. No, go ahead. Perfect. Okay. When you guys got there, what did you guys end up doing? We checked into the rooms. Uh, they had 239. I had 203. Officer then to the building. Uh, I brought my stuff up, went over and said goodnight, and, and then hit the sack. After you guys went to your your separate ways, when's the last? When's the next time you talked to seven? I got up at six thirty, three hours sleep, and went to the office because uh, I figured he'd be sleeping in, crash and burn, and uh, didn't speak to Jen until ten forty five ish, and she she called and asked if Stephen was with me, and I said no. Why? Well, he's not here. Oh, we'll go down the lobby and see if he's in it. How long has he been gone? 25 minutes. Okay. 
I said, go check the lobby. And then I started to think about it, I called her back, and I said, do you have the keys? No, I don't have the keys. So then she said, well, they just called me, and they're going to be out here within the hour. I said, oh, shit. So I drove out there, so it's you probably out to the hotel, because I was at, at and, oh. and I just grabbed my stuff, and said, I'm going to go out there, and in case you guys uh, showed up, I wanted to be there. So he had showed up by the time I got there, and about uh, 30 minutes later, he finally showed up, and I read him the fucking riot act. Did he tell you where he was? Well, he had an energy drink in his hands. He said he got lost, yeah. and, you know, in the back rows. Hell, I got lost, and I had a GPS, and I said, oh, this isn't the right exit. I, didn't so, I wish he had messed up with it. Okay. So like my partner said, we're not here to waste your time. You've been in this line of work before. Did he tell you he was in Northport today? I'm assuming he did it based on your reaction. Is it not? No. See? What happened was they booked into this hotel because on the interview you heard with Jen, if you've not heard it, it's on my playlist. Why? On the interview they did with Jen, they said, right, we're going to have to ask you to find somewhere else to stay because tonight we've got some people coming in and then tomorrow morning we've got forensics coming in. Right, so on the Tuesday night, they had to find somewhere else to stay. So, the father, I believe, drove down and met him at the hotel. And he said he got there about three -ish in the morning, and they, they went to the apparent rooms, right? They, and then when she woke up in the morning, she's waited half an hour and then phoned the father and said, have you seen Stefan? Is Stefan with you? And she, he's gone, no. So during the night, from the time I last said goodbye to the father and I went to bed, once she went to sleep, he's got in her car and drove all the way over to where his parents live. Right? Why would you do that? That's like a six hour journey, maximum, there and back. And why would you do that when his dad has just come down to be with them, to make sure they don't, do they need any help with anything and all this lot? But he drives up there. Now the mother reported that about 20 past to half past three in the morning, her dogs were going berserk. So I don't think that was Stefan because they only all can't get about three o'clock and it takes three hours to get there. But they do believe he may have gone to the storage unit. And now the father had two keys to this storage unit, but he lost one about a year ago. So did he lose one? Well, he obviously lost one. Or was it Stefan who took that key? But to get into the building itself, where the storage units are, you have to have a pin coat. Stefan, as far as the father knew, did not have the pink coat. Did not. So they reckon he was at that storage unit that night. So let's listen. Okay, we went to the door. Yes. Uh, what's the exit you took off at your house? Okay. 179. Okay, do you know the street? Like, a little bit. Okay. So we have, uh, we have. More than enough reason to believe that Stefan was in Northport today at the exit of the to your house. Our concern is we're conducting the Mr. Bush investigation. Yes. Given the proximity of that exit to your home, what we're trying to find out is if she's just hanging out in your house, you just want to get her somewhere safe, we want to put eyes on her, make sure she's okay. She's not at our house, but my wife, well, here's something strange. Is anybody at your house now? Yes. Hang on a second. We raise standard poodles. Say it again? Raise we what? raise standard poodles. Oh, okay. Poodles. And they all they went on full of the room. At what time did the dogs go full alert last night? 
So we're working a missing person investigation currently, like so. Well, let me give her a heads up because she'll be, it's going to be noisy. Okay. We have five standard mm -hmm. poodles. How, how, is, how is your property? Is it like a neighborhood? You guys have no, it's on standard lines. Okay. Standard lines. Yeah. So no is it gated? So they talk about going to that uh, storeroom now, now, right? We've actually looked at that a bit on map time before. So if you missed that, there's, there's a lot of content on the playlist for you to catch up on because we generally, I mean, you know, we're not just like chatting over here, right? I make comments in between, but we're like, there's so much evidence that, have, that has come out in this case. It's unbelievable. And we covered it since the first day when Maddie was missing and we were sharing the flyers and just hoping she'd be found. And then it's like, oh my, we're at the press conference. And then being like, wow, when we learned that actually they believe that Madeline was deceased in the vehicle. Oh my goodness. And then they were looking for tips and saying, look for this. Uh, uh, Lincoln, this car, and then the next minute it's like Stefan Stern's arrested. I mean, that was shocking. So there's a lot of catch up on on the playlist. If you haven't been following, I hope you will, because we've done presentations and deep dives and timelines. I've made videos for you as well, which just uh, like is a, a good overview of the timeline. It's not scattered lines. It's just no. Yeah. Our backyard's gated. Um, they may want to. They're going to come over and want to search a house for apparently. Yeah, apparently Stefan made a trip down to Northport last night. Or yes, or this morning, I should say. I have no idea. But, but there's a storage unit, but he, would, but he wouldn't have access to the key. Sorry about that. I thought I'd edited that bit out. So let's continue. I was making a coffee. Keys to the storage unit, because I had the only key to it. And that would have been locked in my car, and he would have had to come to my room, which he didn't have a key to get into. He does doesn't have a key. He took Jen's key. Storage room. It's in my console. Can, can you check and make sure the key's there? And what? Well, is the key in the basket? We'll go look at the key in the basket. The key in the console is in this car that you're driving up? Uh, hang on a second. You said the key in the console is in My car? car? Yeah. It's only one key. This car out here? Yeah. Do I need to go look? Yeah, let's go see if it's in there. Yes, she's going to put the key out and look for the key in the car. Okay, so Yeah, right there. And that's the only key you that's have the only to key. the storage unit? Yeah. There's supposed to be two keys, but I haven't seen that key yet. Is his name on the storage unit? Mm-hmm. One of the keys. He can't show up and say, hey, I lost my key. Can you give no. me access to... Here's your water. See, they mentioned the keys. And there was supposed to be two, but he lost one about a year ago, he said. Oh, thanks. So other than the storage unit in your house, could you see any reason for Stefan to go down? Where you live? Does he have friends down there? Other family members? No other family members. He's got some friends or acquaintances that uh, he plays whatever war games. Are. I'll tell you a reason. On the Tuesday, or was it the Monday? Monday or Tuesday? Monday, Tuesday morning? He gave the police his phone, yes? He needed to log in to his cloud or his Google account or something. So we believe he went to the house to try and log in. So, so we could clear anything on his cloud or Google or whatever it is where we're storing stuff. Because he's storing stuff everywhere, I should imagine. So, I don't know if he did go to the house because the mother said the dogs went berserk about 25 past... 
23, 25 a.m. Now, if I didn't go settle down for the night until 3 a.m., there's no way he's going to get there for 3.25. No way. Not even a crow could get there that quick. So, could it have been someone else that set the dogs off? Possibly. She says rabbits tend to set the dogs off. Anything like that that comes in the yard can set the dogs off. So I don't think it was Stefan Stearns. Like computer games or? No, it's a board game. He plays card games and action figures. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. He's painted all these caricatures and what have you. He's gotten, you know, some awards or recognitions for it. What time did you catch him on the camera down there? He knows exactly what it is. Um, he's on the phone, so I don't want to misspeak. But it was um, clearly when you were on the way he was down there. So how I went to bed. How long did it take you to get from Orlando to there? Well, with no traffic out last night, two and a half hours. Okay. But if you're dealing with traffic early this morning, you're going to be looking at oh, yeah. close to three. Yeah. Because the traffic on I-4 getting out of here, and then you catch up to 75, and then you catch up to Breakington. And what, what ways can you go? So you can go through the center of the state. Is that the turnpike? No. The center of the state would be you, you where the uh, technical college is on I-4. Okay. You, you hit there, and then you go down like 27. Or oh. But you go down the center of the state and avoid all that bullshit. 27 to what? I don't think I'll be done with that because yeah, I don't pay attention. I just follow the GPS. Oh, okay. You know, but you're going down really. Okay, they just you come out at Arcadia, and then you head head towards 75 Kings Highway, and then you go up north to Toledo. Okay. I it's like speaking German when you're not Hey, listen, I grew up yeah. here. Yeah. You know, went to Winter Park High. What brings so. you down north for? Um, well, we built we built homes uh, in six cities on the road for the company. We started in Point San and Guam de Espanol. So I was actually on a little Palm Coast, and then I went over to look at some homes we were building in Northport. Oh, this is beautiful. I love it. It's rural. And I said, and I expected it to mirror our experience in Palm Coast, but we had a bit of a rocky start. Right now, I guess 100 homes that are going to be completed. The market's changed. I'd love to be able to sell right away. But yeah. I went down there because I, I thought it was a better better area. The whole southwest west is, a, is a great area. It's a booming area. It is. Yeah. I mean, Northport was rated the second fastest growing city last year. Got to get these Yankees to come down and buy some homes. Yeah, right? everybody's stuck in their homes. Yeah. You know, yeah. they love those 2 two and 3% interest rates, oh, which yeah. will never go away. Yeah. You know? And they'll never repeat. They'd be foolish to get rid of those. Yeah. Well, you know, the northerners coming down here will because they want to get the hell out of the north. So when you when you read um, your son the ride act, what do you mean by that? I said, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I said, you know, if they came here, you were here, you know, they would immediately put a bolo out and, and, and find you and arrest your ass and just haul you off to jail. Is that what you want? I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just so fed up with him at this point. And obviously there's something there's something here because I've been here almost six hours. So, so yeah, I've been here six hours. So something's going on. Look, he spent a lot of time lying to us and uh he he fed me some bullshit the other day and, and when i before i left the house the other night i turned to my wife and i said do we really know stuff can we honestly say we really know yeah. and she got really kind of offended defensive a little bit i said no, i'm not saying that he did something but can we honestly say we really know so the other day well when i left yesterday when i left last night i said hey i turned to her i said do we really know you know is he capable of doing something harmful to her. Why would you suspect that? Because some inconsistencies of phone calls he had with me didn't add up. Okay. So I'll give you the sequence. He calls me mid afternoon, three ish, maybe three forty five or something. And say I just had a flat tire. Okay. How the fuck did you get a flat tire? You just drove over to the city. You took her you know, maybe you're running an air where would you have gone to get a flat tire? It, the tire was so flat. He drove on it and ran the and ran the. Um, is that Jen? Yeah, we were that. He he ran the rubber right off the wheel. Yeah. So he had to travel a good distance to do that. And then he pulled into a, a, a ton of shopping center. And I said, "Was the donut in there?" Yeah, I swapped it out and almost crushed my thumb. I said, "Okay." Do you know a shopping center? Oh, no. or and, where he? 
pick up the flat or anything. I have no idea. So then, Monday, just sitting down. Yeah, Monday. Do we want to talk someplace else? We can. Yeah. You want to put Jen in the truck? Jen, do you mind sitting in the truck for a little bit while we finish talking to In the truck? Yeah, that's fine. Or, or wherever, wherever you're comfortable. You can sit in the weekend or whatever you guys How long we got to be? Yeah. Yeah. One minute. Yeah. And we're done. Been a while already. I apologize. All right, keep yeah, take them out. So, uh, so then, uh, okay. So then, then around five o'clock, I get this call, and he's he's telling me about well, there's been an incident, and that uh, then he tells me that uh, he, he dropped her off. And I said, well, tell me what you mean by that. And he said, well, I dropped her off. She doesn't want to be seen being dropped at school because you're not driving a cool enough car. Oh, okay, so you're not driving a Lamborghini, you can't drop her off. So let's go. Okay, dropped her off the block off. He said he watched her through the rearview mirror, walked towards school, and then he left. And uh, I said, okay. And so now, and now you're finding out when you went to pick her up that she wasn't there. And everybody's just discovering this at the end of the day. How many hours later? Okay. So then um, I tried to think when I had a conversation about his phone. He... Um, uh, so I said, uh, okay, well, they're going to want to know where your, where your whereabouts were because you're the last person that saw her, so they're going to want to know. I said, did you have your phone with you? No. Why would you have your phone? I just forgot. It. Forgot mine. I said, beautiful. Uh, so then he tells me that uh, he did an OS update. Now I'm a tech, techie guy. And I said, okay. And he said, wipe the phone out. Really? How does that happen? It's an OS update. It's automatic. You say yes, and that's it. It updates, and then it reboots. It doesn't reset. It reboots. Well, I was I was uh, multitasking, and it, I hit a run button, and it reset. I, and I questioned it then. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, so there's some inconsistencies there. So why would that fall? Right. So I don't know about you, but when I hear him talking, like when he's talking about when he's talking to Steph about the incident, about the night when she went missing. Like, well, that's easy. Did you have your phone? No, I left. I forgot it. Why did you forget? It's like he's talking to a young teenager. He's, this is a 37-year-old man he's talking to. Right? But the father sounds as like he's talking to a 16, 18-year-old. Rather than a thirty-seven-year-old man, it it just boggles me. Even though when you listen to the Ever interview, which is on the playlist, right? He seriously got some thoughts about his son. Right, he lies to him. It's constantly lied to him. So, but it's the way he talks about how he's talking to his son. It's like he's talking to a 16 to 18 year old. He went down. And I asked him last night. When you guys wanted the phone, I said, is there any reason why you wouldn't want to give him the phone? No, I don't think so. Mental illness? Me? No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. oh, okay. When he was eight, he and a friend were playing in a parking area, and a guy came out and got in his Toyota pickup truck, said hello to the kids, and then backed up over him. And they both were run over, but he got hit in the knot in the head okay. with the bumper, and he had a slight tick. He had um, separation anxiety. So, you know, he slept with us for a while, and finally I said, no, you got to go to your own bed and, you know, get over that. He would go over to a neighbor's home. <clears throat> and spend the night and show up at two or three o'clock in the morning wanting, wanting to come home. Mm. But as far as nothing diagnosed or medication. Well, he's been seeing a psychiatrist or a psychologist or something. Okay. He's been on anxiety meds, uh, you know, depression or what have you. I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, mm. So from, he had an accident, a car accident, a car hit him when he was about eight years old. So from that time on, he had um, what did they call it? Uh, sup, uh, oh God, where they, they don't want to be without the parents, right? And it's like we know, but 
by listening to the video tapes they've done and the interviews they've gave. Separation issues, that's it. He he was fixed fixated on Madeline. Right? And I think he had some sort of separation issues with Madeline. Right? And he fixed it, fixed it on her. And I'm wondering, did she say something to him that Sunday night? Don't touch me no more. You're not touching me no more. You, do, you touch me again, I'm going to report you. Right? Or did she say, like, she did, it was mentioned that she did like a lad at school. Did she bring that up? Right? And he's probably thinking, well, no one else is having you. If I can't have you, no one else is. So, so I'm just watching my internet dial and it's very low at the moment. So if you lose me, if I cut out, I'll be straight back. But it's showing one bar at the moment, which is very low. So I'm just thinking, did he have, was it well, like that sort of situation where she's had this fixation on this lad and he's thinking, no, no, no one else is going to be with you. You're mine, sort of thing. And I think, and we all know now that um, it came out that the cause of death was strangulation. Go on any website, any YouTube channel talking about this, it will mention it. Right, but it didn't tell you anything else about the autopsy. No. And we don't want to know, to be honest. So, did he kill her in rage because of her saying something like, well, right, she likes this boy, you're not going to touch me no more. If you touch me again, I'm going to tell, tell on you. Do you get angry? And don't forget, there's a poem out there that he wrote, Missing You or something. And we'll discuss that one more at that poem. And it was wrote by him. And the final, the last verse of it is so chilling. It's like when I was holding you in your, in my arms, as you passed up, as you passed away. I died with, I died inside. Something like that. Right? And it is so chilly. I'm thinking, did you strangle her and then hold her in your arms? After she died. That is so sick, if that is the case. So sick. So he doesn't share that with me. But, uh, you know, he's, he's battled a number, a number of things, depression, anxiety, and what have you. As a, as a child or as an adult? As a, maybe ADD as a child, but as an adult, more severe. Okay. Uh, he he able suffers to, from sleep apnea. Was he able to complete school? I don't know exactly. His mother, okay. who we did online school, and she ended up doing mostly online school. Did he have the knowledge? No. no. What no. did he do for work? I've had him work with me in a variety of ways. Uh, when we were here in Orlando from 2010 to 2013, I did these, uh, what they call BPOs. They're kind of like appraisals. I did 15,000 of them and had him oh, wow. and his friends go out and take these photos. And it was always a challenge to get his ass out of, out of bed and go to work. No, no, no motivation. The more you do, the more you make. Yeah. No motivation there. So uh, we, uh, and after, after that, uh, that work went away, I got involved in various projects around the state of Florida, 
Uh, he really didn't do much. He worked at Quiznos for a while. That didn't last long. So. Why aren't we listening to it every time we get to get, get to something to hear what it says? Cut up. No, it's. I've edited it out. What? I've, all I've done is edit out uh, Grizzly, who was doing the commentary before, with her video. So I've just edited out her, um, her voice, her commentary. Right? And I must admit, it took a long time. Because some some of it was like a minute, maybe long. Some was two, three minutes long, and it took took a long time to edit it out. But if it goes quiet, it's because they've redacted it. That's it. I haven't redacted anything else. All I've done was edit out Grizzly's commentary. Everything else is what was said. Anything else has been redacted by the police. They wrecked his car. Uh, so he's been living with us and me trying to get him out of the house to go work. We came down to Northport. Uh, he stayed there with Jen. So while we were down there until uh, December of last year, he, he lived with Jen. And then I was supporting him in Orlando and I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. You got to come back. Yeah. And I was trying to create an opportunity for him down there, but that didn't materialize. Then I'm trying to get his ass out to get a job at Lowe's well, or Home Depot or something. But coming there to see if she's hiding in the house? Yes. Yeah, so what we'd like to do is, given that you went down there, we'd like to make sure like, he stash her in the bedroom and, hey, just hang out here. No, she's been sorting out his bedroom. Right, but thank you for being here, Tammy V. Thank you. He's, he lives like a fucking pig. And you said there's, oh, you guys have a wing camera right well i was about to tell you that i switched hey northport police is going to stop by to do a wellness check type of thing they're going to see if, it, if somehow uh that motherfucker you know what you know what stopped you from getting in the house he didn't have a garage door opener the front door lock is not working well yep. and i had i had put the lock on the, the slider okay i think we're going to see if it, it, it somehow uh pass. just step another sucker you know what you know what stopped you from getting in the house he didn't have a garage door opener the front door lock is not working well, yep. and I had I had put the lock on the, the slider. Okay. He couldn't get in. All right, so I'm I'm, I'm with the uh, detectives, and we're and, and they're sending Northport police over to do. So that's his wife. His well, ex-wife, I believe, he's talking to on the phone because he he just phoned up to let him know like law enforcement are going to be coming over to the house, and. Um, He's obviously told her how about that night on the Tuesday night. Is it no? Yeah, Tuesday night. How he went back in the early hours. He went back to their home, right? And it's just because the house was fully locked up because the father, the husband, wasn't there, right? He, Right, the house was locked up. He couldn't get in. And she said he didn't have the key to the garage door. And that's the only reason he didn't get in that house that night. But it is scary to think, what would he do if, if he had got in that house? You know what I mean? He needed to get to, I, I would imagine, his computer or whatever he had at his mum and dad's to get onto his, into his cloud account or Google account or whatever to clear any pictures and information he had on there. But he couldn't. He couldn't get in the house, so he couldn't do it. 
but I don't think it was him. Because she said the dogs woke her up round about 3.25am in the morning. Well, the father said they went to the hotel and settled down for the night about 3am in the morning. And there's no way is he going to, like once Jen's gone to sleep, say quarter past three, ten past quarter past three, uh, three in the morning. There's no way is he going to get back to his mum and dad's house by 25 past three. It's a three hour journey at max. Two and a half hours to three hours journey. So I don't think it was him trying, in, trying to get into the house. I think it could have been rabbits or something in the garden. Because in the other interview i done, right, it states that the dogs will bark at rabbits that come in the gardens or anything that comes in the garden it sets the dogs up. So I think it's something like that maybe. That set the dogs up. Hold on. Be right back. My cats are going to get a beating. Why am I talking? Not on my TV. Come on. Come on. You won't fight? Don't fight me nowhere. But not on my TV. Look. Look. I'm sorry, they were on their little one page where well, they were having their play fighting. But the play fight ran by my TV unit and my TV, and then knock it. And I can see my TV ending up flat on its face one day. Anyway, so I don't think it was Stephen at the mum's house on the early hours of Wednesday morning. He couldn't get there that soon. But I do believe he went to the storage unit and that's why we talk, we're listening to the father now and as I said I've not cut any of him out, I really haven't. Do a check to make sure that she isn't there, okay? So you may want to alert the dogs, they're, I'm they're really coming. I've got the food, I'm fixing the people. Okay. Just tell them it'll get noisy, okay? Okay, alright, well I'm going to let you go. They're good guys, they're, I've been laying with them, yeah. I need you to give me a phone. Alright, alright. All right. And then as far as outside of your house, what does the layout of your bar look like? Well, there are, uh, there's a house to the right of me, and to the left of it is woods, and there's woods across the street. That front's I-75. Uh, at 745, it would have been well lit. Uh, there would be traffic, small amount of traffic going up and down our street, because uh, they're constructing homes to the pine, so there's always people, always people doing that. So this is no HOAs, I'm assuming? No, it's, sir, no, it's all standard by. When you say woods, you mean like... Woods, 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 you'll see there's wooded lots all around. So next to me, there's there's a, a new house, and, and there's a renter. There's my house, and then to the left, there is a wooded lot, wooded lot. There's a, there's a lot of wooded lots before my house, and then you run into one or two houses. Uh, so going back to the cameras, you were going to say something. Okay, so I ditched Comcast. And right. I had ring. I had the the sky bell hooked up to Comcast. Okay. And I realized when I kept seeing this orange light, said, shit, I got to move this over. It's a pain in the ass. Move it over to the uh, Frontier Communications versus Comcast. So I got to reconnect with you. So the cameras weren't working for last no, week. No, because we, okay. we we discontinued the service. And in fact, the motor's sitting in my office floor. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do you think uh, Do you think your son's capable of doing something like this? I know it's a hard question as a father. I wasn't yeah. a hero, uh, and a, a welcome comment. I said, I, I, how well do we know? Yeah. And nothing would surprise me at this point. I don't know. Um, Is your wife his mom? Yes. We are biological parents. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say anything's possible. I, I, I don't know. I mean, there would have to be some ulterior motive for sure. some reason. Sure. Was there a motive? Well, it's we don't know. We're trying to find her. We still think she's yeah. alive. So well, this 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 press conference indicated that she had some comments on social media about I want to live in the woods. Yeah, was that accurate? Or that was well, we were not going to put anything inaccurate out there. So. I asked Jen about that. She said, Yeah, we had a conversation about the Third World World War. Where would you live? You know, the Palestine-Israeli 
situation. That's what it's so that was more of a fictitious. If if doomsday happens, yeah. sweetheart, where are you going to live? Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't live in the woods. I said, I don't. She gonna live in the woods now by herself? I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, my idea of roughing it is that Howard Johnson's without a pool. What is? Yeah, no kidding. You know the unit number of your storage unit? What? It's a good point. Grizzly brought this up when she was talking on her commentary. She said, why would you talk about the end of the world, the apocalypse and all this, right, to a young girl who suffers with anxiety, right, does not like to sleep on her own, scared of the dark, and all this. You wouldn't, would you? No wonder she never, she didn't like sleeping by herself. No wonder she had so much anxiety when her mum's apparently talking of this. But I don't think that's true. I think that's just something Jen has said. Like, all right, if this happens in, in our country, what's happening in Palestine and all that, like, what's up, if that was to happen here, then where would you go? And she's apparently said, I'll go and live in the woods. You know what I mean? I don't think that was the conversation. I think she told her friend this, that when she's 13, she's going to go and live in the woods. Because she'd rather live there than be around Stefan. So I think her mum was just making that up to, uh, that's the reason why she put that in the, to her friends or whatever. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, uh, good. Obviously, you can see the scope of the movie. At some point, we may want to get that story in there. I was, well, I was there a couple weeks ago pulling out some tax boxes. There's not that much room in there. I mean, you could stash a body if you wanted to, uh, if that's the case. Um, but uh, like I said, as far as I know, I have the only, only key. I don't know if there were two keys issued, and I haven't seen the other key for well over a year or so. Is there a chance that he has that key? If I did. Yeah, I would uh, say it could, chance, right? could be a chance because he's he's stolen from us, okay. and and uh, why he would want it uh, is beyond me uh, because all his stuff is that he has, you know, guitar or what have you, is stuck in the very back, and he didn't want that. But I ended up trying to clean out our garage and I stuck all this, all, all the other stuff there, and, and he wouldn't like that. Nor, nor would I think he would spend the time to pull shit out of there to to uh, to get it. You know? What did he think about? Me? Very upset Monday when he. He was talking, talking to me, uh, you know, he was sobbing and blaming himself for her disappearance. And he was just, uh, I, I could tell he was just going to be an emotional wreck. Yeah. Did he ever have, did he, did he discipline her? How long were Right. Yeah, he's an emotional wreck because his world was falling apart. He was getting caught out. He thought by doing the, uh, what was it, where you clean your phone? Of doing that, not just once, he did it twice on the Monday. He did it, did it once in the morning and once at 12 midnight, Monday night. So he did it twice. So, he knew, he thought, oh, they won't find any of these pictures. But when you do um, a watching aim of your phone, right, where you clean it and you take everything off it, right, there's a procedure you go through. You cannot do it by accident. It does not do it automatically. It will ask you, do you want to do this? And you have to press yes or no. So you press yes, and then it'll come up with some out. Are you sure this is your, like, once you click yes here, everything will be wiped clean. Do you still want to go through with this? 
and you have to click yes so it's not automatic it's not something you do by mistake right and he thought by doing that they wouldn't find that evidence that he had on his phone of madeline well you know what police can go up i don't even know i was told five years back but i'm sure they can go further if they want so he's not as clever as he thought he was um I, it's hearsay you know he may have yelled at her because the jen and, and jen would tell me this the, the jen my wife and the dogs and the dogs yeah and during those times was their relationship seemingly normal yeah I mean, they secluded themselves in stefan's room the three of them uh and then jen, jen. Go ahead. and they would spend the bulk of their time there times to play with the dogs they would bring sailor with them okay and uh would uh, go into the bedroom and maybe read a book or watch a movie together, okay. hang out. But... Okay. okay. And nothing, I mean, you were a cop for years, nothing you noticed that would be alarming? I didn't notice anything out of you right now. Okay. okay. Um, so then just going back to the storage unit, obviously they're going to go to the house and check in the near future if you have any issues yeah. with us checking out your storage. Your code was used this morning to access the property, the storage property, your key back code. Yeah. I have Northport PD in of your storage unit. I know we're we're in a weird situation. Are you all right if they end up breaking a lot to get in there to make sure? Yeah. Okay. So I was, I don't, I don't, he just asked. I just heard it. He just asked Mr. Stern if he was okay with us breaking the lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a few times. So we're here. Okay. We're, we're working with management down there. Yes. Uh, and this is this is statewide news. Yep. Yep. Um, so a lot of people are going above and beyond okay. helping us. Let me the keypad. That's interesting. What's your code? Sure. What, what, what do you want to do? Uh, they want the waivers signed before they break down the rule. Oh, okay. Yeah, they want to sign the signature. So, yeah. you, you mind, mind doing a West signature or an East signature? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Yep. You pay your code to enter the property this morning. And what time is that at? Uh, nine. 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 And your wife thought she wouldn't have one through short term. She wouldn't even know where it is. And, um, Jen was with you this whole time, right? So wait, 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 wait. I don't know. I don't know where Jen was until she called me at eleven. Okay, Jen, at eleven. And she said, "Hey, Seth, it's not here. Is he with you?" Okay. You see, when the police said, "So Jen was with you the whole time," oh, oh no, 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 no. He don't know where Jen was until she phoned him. What time did you say? Eleven. You know what I mean? Half eleven. About 11, I think she phoned him. So, where was, she was probably passed out in the bedroom because we all know how she loves her sleep. So, then he made, us, made up the story of getting lost in whatever. So. Wait, wait. Oh, no. Was that? Yeah. Um. We'll take this elevator here. Well, we're going to put it just walking Yeah, I was like, Was this the sheriff's office? There's no way this was the sheriff's office. No, no, it was just opening up. Down 33rd is where you got around it. Yeah. Who, yeah. Actually, who was the sheriff? Y'all told it. No. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to Google it. I would, well, we have pictures. Of, we have shrines of past yeah. sheriffs all over. I'm sure we'll, yeah. we'll see them. Yeah. He was a good guy. He was kind of, I guess, revolutionary back then. That guy, what have you. Yeah. But, uh, what was the pay back then? I think it was maybe 800 a month. Uh, yeah, probably not. Yeah, but back then it was a good job, eh? Well, you know, it was fun. I, I tell you what, mm -hmm. once you get it in your blood, you never let it go. So I, I was moving from the Campbell suit from Jacksonville to. And I'm taking the I'm taking this talk back Sunday evening. And I've got to be at the office in Jacksonville to pick somebody up and ride along. Yeah. Hey Adam, we'll just hang out here so that the, he doesn't have property. Okay. So I pull up the, I pull up four thirty six thirty nine two of Casper, which is really people. Uh -huh. 
And as I'm approaching the intersection, this guy is leaving. And so we pull through the intersection, and this guy is leaving. And, and then I notice up ahead the guy's riding his bicycle. And this guy plays forward. And it's like, fuck, he's going to hit this guy. Oh, no. He hit him. Set him flying. I went running up to the. I drove up to him, and he pulled into the ABC liquor line for whatever reason, and turned around and looked at me and said, thank you very much. I got your face. I've got your license plate. I got another pay phone, because that's what he did that. <laughs> and called out of my police department and said, told him what happened. I said, I think he's going to be heading yeah. down. And I thought it came up. Hey, Evan, is that remote right there? We turn this thing off? Yeah. And so, uh, I'm going to be looking up. Yeah. I'm now up stuck on 95 at 3 a.m. I've got to be at the office at 7 a.m. And these sailors coming back, picking up the company from my apartment. And I said, thank you, Lord, appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. And it was a long day. So, yeah. so do you, are you guys still residing in Orlando part time? You mentioned something off of Westwood. Well, that's where our corporate office is. That's your corporate office. And so okay. when I got up this morning, I went over there to meet up with everybody yeah. and then kill some time because I'm just a type A personality. Sure. I'm there sitting around. Sure, sure. Whatever. So sitting in a parking lot had to kill you. It did. <laughs> They're just like, come on. Yeah, dude. yeah. So well. anyway, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if somehow he stole the key out of my, out of my car because okay. I had all the keys there. Okay. So I had. Uh, Does he have access to your car? He would, because uh, I would keep the keys on my desk. He would easily go in there. And, he say, yes. and when was the last time he was at your house in Oakport? Was it over the weekend for her yeah. birthday? So I moved him back down from Kissimmee in December okay. to try to get him started on another career opportunity. Okay. It didn't so I'm trying to work on some other things. So he he visited them. He lied to me about this. He visited them maybe six weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Visited, and, visited who? I'm sorry. Jen. Okay. And uh, oh, I'm going to Frank's house and I need a little extra cash. Okay. When are you going to be back? I'll be back later tonight. Mm -hmm. So I get an alert that uh, I told me. Uh, so, on e, on EPAS, I get an alert. I go, oh, I'm trying to call him up. Uh, how specific? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, you know, he so he lied to me about what he was doing. Yeah. But he he was in Orlando until three o'clock, maybe Sunday, and then he then he left because I told him yeah, that's what I told he him. had to take care of his room, yeah. clean the mess out of there before he could go. Yeah. So he did that. And he got up there at uh, six thirty or so. So um, I just was kind of over here in the conversation. Would it be safe to say and accurate that your son had no rights to this search, uh, this storage unit at all? If he asked my permission, I. Would allow it. Did, did he ever ask you permission? No. Okay. And again, I like I said, I've been missing this team for yeah. how long have I had this? Maybe I've had this team for maybe 18 months. Okay. So was he staying with you kind of in Northport? Yeah. But up I until moved, up until now. I moved, I moved him back in December because okay. I couldn't afford Okay, so from December to to, to, to today essentially. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Where was he staying up here with Jen? Yeah. Okay. I just realized we just let Jen downstairs. She had the key to your truck? No. Okay, well, I guess we won't be too long. It's just it's dark out. Um, going on here. You know, uh, why, would he, why would he spend nearly six hours driving round trip to go to, to, go to Northport to the storage unit? Well, I mean, hopefully, we're, we're to, hopefully we may be able to connect to the Wi Fi. What's the. What's that? Pause the recording at 10.15. It's a surreptitious recording with uh, Mr. Stearns. My name's Corporal Richards. Also, 10.12 was our with me. It was Corporal Evan Avia and Kissimmee Detective. We didn't do with Mr. Stearns. Sorry. Mr. Stearns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is the second thing. Use the consent, but we're going to kind of slow down on that aspect. We want to make sure we're doing this all that way to, to, to do what's best for and uh, to make sure that we're about board and everything. So while we greatly appreciate your cooperation, um, we're not going to force entry in there right now. Um, does your wife ever go to the storage unit? Does she what? Ever go to the storage unit? No. Uh, no, she's never been to that storage unit. How does he know the code to the, your code to the storage unit? Is it have... written down somewhere? No. So I was thinking about that earlier. So there's another incident here. So I get a call from the storage unit two or three weeks ago telling me that they were running an 
I must admit, my mum taught me this trick, the same trick he did. He did. So if there's a number you need to remember, don't write like a pin number down in a book or on your phone or anywhere. Write it as a phone number. Right? And put it under some fictitious name. Yeah? So then you think, all right, say so you, um, I don't know, it's a pin number for a storage unit. You put it down as a phone number under a fictitious name. And that way you know the number, but no one else would know it was a, a pin number. If they were to look on your phone, they just see, oh, six and six, oh, phone number. Oh, you know what I mean? They just see it as a phone number. They would not see it as a pin number. Oh, it, of the units because there was going to be an inspection or something and my unit wasn't properly locked. So okay. the way it works is that you've got this slide mechanism, mechanism you know, unlock it and then unbolt it from, from the hinge and then you have to push it back and then insecure it in one of the two holes. And they said it wasn't properly locked and they flagged it and I need to get over there and fix it. So I went over there, opened it up, looked at it, everything's fine, and, and then locked it properly. And I'm going to say maybe there's a 50-50 chance I did that, but I'm pretty anal about it. And so I don't know. A 50-50 chance you did what? What do you mean? Pardon? A 50-50 chance you did what? I, I may not have locked it properly, or okay. maybe now that uh, I'm aware that he possibly had a key to it, that he wouldn't have did it good. Okay. But nothing out of the ordinary. Has he ever gone to the unit to help you with something? Oh, he's helping load it up, yeah. All right. oh, okay, so. So he could well, have the code you know, for that. Maybe he maybe he observed me punching in the code. Okay. Which is pretty uh, devious on his part. So, um, how long did it take you? Yes, he's not the word. Time. When you say pretty good time, there's low traffic. So, we're not on 75 and nothing on. Uh, so, I think I got up here under, I'm definitely under three hours, but I, I would say at least two and a half hours. Try to figure out where we were going to stay because I uh, uh, had no idea. So, we found, a, we found a place out there off the Western Parkway. I think I left around midnight and got up here 245 ish. Right. Well, um, I can pick one exactly just by the get up a pilot. That's all right. That was kind of just a, just a ballpark because we don't go down to North Florida at all. Um, well, so we've been all very straightforward with each other. You've inferred several times that you suspect there's more going on. Mm -hmm. um, we did do a release. Um, your son has been arrested uh, for sexual battery. There you what? go. For sexual battery. Um, essentially rape. Okay. Um, and that's where we're at with this investigation right now. We see it wasn't Jen, but um, so it's still active, so we won't get into the yeah. argument. But I mean, you, you've done the shot before. I think you can reasonably infer where we're, where we're at. Yeah. Um, um, so that's kind of why things are going to slow down a little bit. Um, I understand. We're gonna. So um, we're still on the pace down just a little bit. Uh, when I told him his son had been arrested and charged, this had to be on the Wednesday because it was on the Wednesday they they arrested him. Right. It was after they went to that police presser press release, and it was after that. They arrested him. Um, so, in that regard, not necessarily in the regard of trying. Okay. So we're going to be, um, you know, executing a search warrant down there at the storage unit. You know, there's no reason to break the lock. We're just going to go take a look. So you need to be there with the key to let you in. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, they, they'll coordinate that, and um, you know, we'll coordinate with the. Storage yet. So wait, the dad is not. Right. What I'm going to do, um, I'm going to hand that to the lead detectives on the case. Um, so you say Kissimmee, so it's not, it's not. Initially, we believe this is going to be a sheriff's office case. And at this point, um, it's not looking like it's going to be a sheriff's office case. It's going to be a Kissimmee case. Now, we are heavily, heavily involved, which is why we're all here. Well, you got two issues you're dealing with here. What's that? You've got the missing person that's in your jurisdiction, and then. Uh, I guess the Kissimmee's handling the other issue. Correct. Okay. Correct. 
So we're going to continue to remain involved. Um, and I mean, that's the semantics of it, of who, who's investigating. Um, but that's why we're the Orange County Sheriff's Office today, not the Kissimmee Police Department. Um, so will he be transported to Kissimmee? Or um, eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually. So initially, um, he'll be yeah. at Orange County, and then eventually he'll go to Osceola. Is there multiple counts? Um, I, I right know. now, there's only one count. Okay. Um, but the investigation is still unfolding, so there could be, could be more. Mm-hmm. And there were many. There was many, as she's just about to say, as I cut her off. Right? There was 60 counts, charges against him. This was at the beginning, 60 counts. And each count carried 10 charges. 10 charges. So how many is that? 60 times 10. You know what I mean? But then, when I found something in that storage unit, which was a, a disk or something, hard drive, that I found a lot more information. And I think it was over 3,000 images, I think. I'm not sure, so don't quote me on that. I'd have to check that up. But I'm sure I've seen it saying three, I'm sure it's, I heard it was 3,000 something. I was seeing it and read it, but I can't be sure. But there's a lot more charges on that side. Let alone, a couple of weeks later, he gets charged with the murder. Many, many more. 60 charges. We let you see them, each one representing at least 10 videos or pictures. Oh my. If you've never seen that, what I did was I made a video for you. I didn't read out every. Sorry, I thought I'd edited that bit out. There's a bit, couple of bits I haven't edited. Every single charge, but I did scroll through it so you could pause to read it just so you get the context of what on earth he'd been charged with. So yeah, so no one is facing the death penalty for that. And then later, and it was much later, it was about two months later. No, it's not just, he wasn't uh, looking at the death penalty for that. Because even though they brought a law in, in that state, that year, all these cases have got on him, all these charges happened before that law, that new law came in. So they couldn't get him on the death penalty for that. But... Um, like a month or two months later, they did when they got him on the de- murder charge. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to skip past this a bit. Oh, come on. Right. Too excited, all of a sudden you pick up, you know. We've got experts on the case. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, before, what was that? He wasn't going to get an answer about that. Yeah. 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 Well, of course. Of course. <laughs> They're like kids, you know, they just poop and pee and yeah. vomit all over the place when you're least suspecting. So. Um, well, this Next is totally the, the, the car. Dog. I called the dog ambulance. I, am, uh, I, I don't know whether to say I'm in. I'm flabbergasted or impressed that Stefan said never. Well, he, he was, as far as I know, he was going to pass out at 3 a.m. Yeah. I did take my leave off the crash and burn. And, uh, and then to find out that he made this round trip to the airport. Well, I can't imagine what's going through your head right now. I do sympathize for you and your family. And... I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm pissed that he's done this to us. He's done this to himself. He's done this to us and somebody else. That's... Damn, bro. Damn. So, and, uh, right. Yeah. Don't do that. I said, the you're brought up from Winter Garden to Mount Dora, and that's a long way to go. <laughs> and I said, you don't want to upset me. And the guy was very, very professional. Apparently, he was driving on, on a, maybe a registration issue or something. So I had to go up again because they wouldn't let him drive a car. But, hmm. and you, you know, it's like the old saying you don't fool with the IRS or the Lone Ranger, and you don't fuck with the Highway Patrol. So they're not nice guys. <laughs> they can be, but they're nice guys. <laughs> I always love when these detectives have to talk along and they're like, <laughs> as you can hear, they're not really laughing. Not really. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> okay. And then it just makes me laugh because I'm like, oh my word. Uh, Heidi said, is battery. These may arise, if, if any. Um, 
So we're trying to facilitate all this, you know, least amount of it's got some intrusion in your life. Um, yeah. Give me the right home. The model home? The model home? 13. No, Luis, Luis has been there today, so no. Yeah, he's in there already. And he would have been there very early in the morning, or Luis would have been there around 10 o'clock, and he would have noticed that. In speaking to our Pacific Village Department counterparts, they are not prepared to release the townhome back down. So I, I don't have a timeline for that. Um, I, I imagine they're in communication with her. She may already know that, um, but they are not releasing the apartment tonight. Is, it, is she still out in the car? She should be. She, yeah. be she called me earlier. It said she's frightened to be out there. Well, I mean, she's walk, I mean, we're good to walk downstairs. This was just yeah. kind of a debrief. Okay. So I'm going to the office tomorrow and spend some time there. Do you need to get together with me anytime tomorrow before I leave town and head back? If we do, we'll, we'll contact you. If you're back in Northport, that's not an issue. We're going to have one of our detectives down there. If we need to liaison with you at some point, we'll make it happen. Okay. So, um, they give us county cars and county gas, so we, we can drive. And they have AC, you know, like back in the day. <laughs> Well, we had 480. Whatever that means. Four windows down, 80 miles an hour. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's how you got the guy going 70 a little bit. I had to stop and back up. Not really. So, Mr. Turns, we had a long. Yeah. Nothing to hide. Very good. Well, we you seem like a good man. Really do appreciate it. I'm sorry that your son, well, we're going down this path. Well, like I said, I questioned my wife last night. I said, do we really know him? And she got pretty pissed at me. But I said. Well, you're going to have to deal with when she looks at the news here soon. I don't know if it's yeah. better to find out for her to find out by looking at the news or for you to tell her first. Yeah, we don't get, I mean, shouldn't get I'm sure there'll be some news right? down, down there. And, you know, my greatest fear is that what we're going, what we can experience as far as blowback. And, and uh, I, uh, I'm a private person. I, and I, like, why is it? Uh, I'm not going to say it terrifies me, but we're going to say that, you know, the media frenzy and what have you, that somebody wants, wants the angle, you know, hey, I've got, I've got the hot story today, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. And then my partner can probably be better to it, but I mean, expect that you may have a car or two out from your house, given you know that his uh, relationship well, to Northport. But you know, the, um, I think I think your saving grace is that you're not in the Orlando market, right? right. Um, you're in the Tampa market. I can only imagine uh, you're you're not. Stearns isn't the m most common last name, but it's not the most rare last name. Yeah. yeah. And you're talking about a statewide search. They have to do a really good job, I think, to find you. Yeah. I'm not saying they're not good at their job, but. You know, well, I mean, um, I'm out there in the public. If you just Google me, yeah, you know, I'm going to come up because I'm in, I'm in real estate. So, yeah. You know. Well, I, I wouldn't be concerned about that until there's a problem. And if they're out in front of your house, and you know, um, you can always call Northport, and they can advise you. But if they're ever on your property, just tell them to leave. Yeah. You know, um, as far as professional blowback or anything like that, I, it's tough. Every two and two together. Does Jen know that he made this discovery? So um, we did speak to Jen. Jen was previous to the police department. Um, so my understanding is that she is briefed uh, very well, um, but that's a conversation you guys could probably have, you know, on the drive back or, or, or at some point in the near future. I just don't see where he had the energy to do this. I mean, unless he was faking it. Oh, I don't know where he got the heaven energy, but you're telling me he was down there at 745 at Toledo Lake? Yes. I mean, 7.45, 3.45, he waited until she got up, went to sleep and snuck out. Not long after, we all said goodnight. You can't reason. As a, as a reasonable person, you can't understand the unreasonable. There's no way you'd be able to wrap your head around anything that he's accused of doing or that he did. There's no way that any of us are able to, even with all of our experience, and public safety, there, there's just no way. So, wow. Well, I mean, obviously, making a move like that is there's yeah. something, 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 something's going on here. Yeah. 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 All right, let's get you out of here, Mr. Stearns, and you can try to progress. Yeah. Right. So, 
what I don't understand get was how he was I can understand him being worried about the backlash and I don't think anyone should go after the parents. Right? Yes, I did probably the mother probably Molly called him because he was the youngest child. They had another brother. But I think there's like eleven years difference between them. So but you can't control as parents what your children do when they reach eighteen. When they fly the coot and start their own life and whatever, you can't control what they do, where they go, or even what they say. Right? Sometimes my family my keeper say, Mum, you can't say that. Pardon? Pardon? I can say what the hell I like. I don't tell you what to say, so don't tell me. Right? So you cannot control people when they reach 18. You can't. And it was sneaky. People like that are, they hide it so well. They hide it so well. But I don't know, there's just something about this Jen. Right, she must have known. You know what I mean? Did Madeline not t say anything to her? Like, I don't like him being here, Mum. He's always around me. He's always watching me. Or anything like that. Did she not say anything to her, Mum? She never said anything to her dad. So perhaps she didn't say anything to her mum. Perhaps she thought she could handle it herself and that's what happened. Because he had separation issues. He was always on the phone to Jen. Uh, he couldn't be with her, but he was on the phone to her, video, you know, uh, video calling. You know what I mean? So they could see each other face to face and or on the computer all the time to each other. So, but I just find it a shame, a crying shame, that the only room Madeline had was that little space in the corner, up the corner of the, what you call, dining room, living room area. She had this little edge envy with a bed in there and a cupboard and a desk or whatever. She it had no privacy really. She couldn't talk to some her friends on the phone without everyone without her mum or Stefan or someone hearing her. You know what I mean? So she probably thought she couldn't tell no one because she's in uh, like a rock stuck between, a stone stuck between a rock and a whatever it is and nowhere else to go, right? But it's, I can't believe her mum, because her father owned that house, right? And rented out the bedrooms. Now there's four bedrooms. Right? Jane had one. There was two other housemaids that took the two other rooms upstairs. And then there's a, another room, a fourth bedroom. Right? Now, why couldn't Maggie pay after? That would be because Jane would have to pay an extra £600 a month rent for Maggie, Maggie, Maggie to have that room. That's why her room was in the corner of the living room come dining room. That room was for someone else to rent out who could pay the £600. Which I think is disgusting. You think the father would say, yeah, you pay your rent on your room. She can have that room. You know what I mean? But what gets me as well... <coughs> 
He's one of the house guests who lived there. Had a 16-year-old son sleep over so many nights during the week. Where did he sleep? Where did he sleep? Because we've seen pictures of the other two rooms and they all had, like, double beds in. Yeah? So where did this 16-year-old lad sleep? On the floor. Because I know as a mother, I wouldn't be wanting to... Like, I remember when I had to go down to Glasgow for my treat, for some treatment. I asked, I said, it has to be a twin, twin beds. Because I've got my... <coughs> <coughs> Because the treatment started on the Monday. So I went down on the Sunday and my daughter met me down there because she lived in, she lives by Glasgow. A good hour of drive away, but she lives near, right? <coughs> so she was staying with me Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday night. Then on Wednesday, my son was coming down and he was staying with me Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Friday, after my last day of treatment, we came home. Right? I get there. I, they hadn't got me a room, room booked. They hadn't booked down, put in their computer. So they had to get me a room. Even though, so I showed them the proof, the email and everything. So they sorted me a room out and I finally got there and it was like a double bed. I went, are you serious? You could, even if it was two single beds, you couldn't split them because they put them between these two bed, bedroom units, bedside units, and you couldn't move the bedside units. And I went, are you kidding me? So, Monday, Sunday to Tuesday was fine because I was with my daughter. And my daughter said, well, why didn't you just say, look, I need twin beds. I said, you know what, dear? I was just too tired. I just travelled all the way down from where I was to Glasgow, got here at the hotel. I just wanted to chill out. I wasn't in the mood for arguing with them, right? So when my son came, uh, he had to sleep, he actually brought a sleeping bag. I think it was a sleeping bag he brought or something like that. So he was in the sleeping bag and I had to do that. So we separated, but it's, you know what I mean? And um, to be honest with you, I didn't sleep much during the night. I weren't. So I was up doing my 5D diamond art at like 2 and 3 in the morning <laughs> and going outside for a walk at 4am in the morning and coming back up and making myself a coffee. <laughs> I just wasn't sleeping. So my son and my daughter always slept like flipping logs. Me? Nope. So apart from that, if I hadn't been so tired and whatever and worried about the treatment the following day that on the Sunday, if I hadn't been worried about that treatment on the following day and being tired, I probably would have said, look, this isn't acceptable. I need twin beds. I've got my son coming on Wednesday. You know what I mean? But luckily, I do believe he brought a sleeping bag. I think he did. And he was sleeping in a sleeping bag. And I had the duvet cover, which was fine for the time I was sleeping anyway. But normally I would have said, no, I need queen beds. You know what I mean? We need queen beds. I can't sleep in the same bed as my son. If he hadn't have had a sleeping bag, I'd have gone down then. I'd have said, look, I need another room. I need queen beds because I can't sleep in the same bed as my son. And even now, my grandson, who's 
coming up to seven. He's now starting to sleep in his own bed, which is, he's had his own bed all the time while he's been here. They've got their own bedroom. The grandkids have a bedroom, they share it, but it's their bedroom, right? And he's been sleeping in his own bed, which is great, because he finds it cooler in his bedroom than in my bedroom. My bedroom gets really hot and stuffy. And I don't like having, I can't have the windows wide open because of the height of where I live and my cats. Plus having the kids there, I don't want them climbing up at the window and going, Hoo. You know what I mean? No, not happening. So, if I have the windows open, which I don't in my bedroom, and they're not opening the kids' room, I can't even open that window. But there is a breeze that comes through the air vents in their bedroom. So, their bedroom's a lot cooler than mine. So he sleeps in there now, which I'm pleased about. Because it's coming up to seven, he shouldn't be sleeping with his grand no more. He should be in his own bed. He sleeps in his own bed most of the time now at home. There's still some nights he'll get out of bed and climb in with his mum or dad or climb in with his sister. She's only three. Right? Or if his sister's in the bed with his mum and dad, he'll climb into her bed. <laughs> Doesn't make sense why he'll get out of his bed to go and sleep in his sister's bed. Right? He might as well have just stayed in his own bed. <laughs> but he does that sometimes. Anyway, so I just don't get Jen. I really don't. And why would you send your 13 year old daughter to go and sleep? with your, in the same room and the same bed as your partner, or be not your partner, but you're sending her off to sleep in the same room, same bed as a 37 year old man. No, not happening, not happening. And why she thought that was okay, I do not know. I do not understand that. What she, what her thought of, what was going through her brain, what, was that okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, I trust him. Do you? She's 13 years old, right? I wouldn't trust any man. Right, I wouldn't. So. That's that interview over with. Now, oh, oh God, oh, come here. What is going on? Hold on. What's that playing up? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, bit of a technical problem then, but we're having a bit of bad weather at the moment, so it might be that playing up as well. So I just don't get Jen, and I'm sure I heard him say, Stefan's father say, when I told him that Stefan had been charged with sexual B, right? I'm sure he said, has Jen been charged? And I said, no. I'm sure he asked if Jen had been charged. Now, why would he ask if Jen had been, if that is the case, if he asked if Jen had been charged, why would he ask that? You know what I mean? I'm going to have to listen to that full interview properly again and I'll put the link well the link is in the description so if you want to watch that interview properly with Grizzly True Crimes with her commentary then please do so right 
Um, but she's got a playlist and she's got a lot more videos on this than I have. Because she's gone into everything. Every piece of paper, every piece of information that's come out, she has spoke about it. Right? That's how good she is. She even got all this information and paid for all this new information that now is coming out. She paid for it all. And that's why I always give credit. I always give credit to anyone if I use their video, always. Even if I edit them out, it's still their video. So they will always get credit off me. And so please go over to Grizzly True Crimes. The link is in the description. If you're watching on replay, please go and sign, subscribe to her. She's brilliant. Right? There's only several YouTubers I would, I would literally say, go, go now and subscribe. You know what I mean? And she's one of them. Because you're missing out on so much by not subscribing up to her. That's, what I, that's how I feel. That's how good she is. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to do a live, uh, another live. But I think it's going to be covering... Oh, well done. I'll just soon... Hold on, I'll find out. Oh, yes. It's the... There's interviews of... Jen Soto, right? Now, we have watched. I'm trying to get this sorted out. We have watched um, the two interviews she did, but there's actually a third one. And it's where they. The police are driving her to the police station for that press release. And they're just general chit-chatting in the car. Well, I'm going to be showing that one. That's very interesting, that one is. And I want to go through all her interviews, all the... Interviews she did at the beginning, like the, the police interviews that we've listened to, uh, that third interview that we're going to be listening to, and the TV interviews she did, the news ones, which she did on the, I believe, on the Tuesday. Because on the Wednesday, Stefan was arrested. So these interviews they did with the news people was done on the Tuesday. So, we're going to go over, look at all them again. Because as I said, sometimes you watch a video and you can pick out certain red flags. Then you watch it again and you think, did I hear right then? Did they just say that? I didn't hear that before. So that's what I want to do. I want to go through all the interviews. So if I do that, that's going to be a long live. So for me to do that, I'll be starting earlier. I'll be starting. I had to wait till I had to put this off till eight thirty tonight because I was waiting for that video that I've been editing to uh, process and then upload it and all that lot and then download it, right? And it took longer than I thought. Editing it took a long time. And I didn't, I thought I'd edited everything I needed out. But there's clips in there that I just missed, right? So I will edit that out again. I'll go through it when I've got... I think I was rushing. Right? Because I was editing it and then I got halfway through that in video and I clicked on the wrong part and it 
Delete it all. I thought, oh, God, I've got to start again. So I had to start again. So I was kind of like rushing it. But I think tomorrow I'll sit down in the morning. <laughs> Not in the afternoon, in the morning. Well, I've got to go out first in the morning. So once I've been out, I'll come back and I'll sit down and edit that video again. And some other videos that I want to edit. So you don't get the commentary from everyone else. You'll only get commentary from me. But the credit will go to that YouTuber. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. So if you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. Um, I have not edited anything out of that video concerning the father. I only edited, and as you'll hear, there's several bits in there that I didn't quite catch, I missed, right? I only edited the commentary from Grizzly, the YouTuber, whose video it is. That's all I've done, was edit her out, right? So, as I said, I didn't edit the father out and nothing else out, okay? So, I'm going to leave that there, so please give this video a like. Leave me a comment. If you're watching on replay, leave me a comment. I do reply. If, I, if it feels like I need to reply, I'll give you a reply. If not, I'll show you some love, some appreciation for sending me a comment. So, until later, I will see you tomorrow. I'm not sure if it's going to be Sebastian or if... If I get time, it might be uh, Magdalene. I don't know yet. There is another case I'm looking into, which was brought to my attention yesterday, so I'm going to be doing a live on that soon. So until then, thank you all for watching my videos. Thank you all for being here tonight and commenting. And... Thank you for everything. So until then, stay safe. No. Mm -hmm.